I'm back! Crash is back, folks! Crash is back! Crash is back! And guess what, folks? What can I possibly say about Crash Bandicoot that already hasn't been said before? Classic white knuckle platforming? Check. An easy to follow, albeit silly story? Check. Collectibles? Ta -da -ba! Double check. Now, with the release of the Insane Trilogy, he's back and better than ever. But is this remake truly better? Is this the, quote, definitive version of Crash Bandicoot? Arguably yes and no. This is Game Falx Theater and my name is Kyle. Indulge me if you will as I talk about the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy and the positive and negative aspects that the fully remade Crash Bandicoot has brought to the series, whether it be mechanically or visually. Also spoiler warning. I grew up with Crash and other platforming legends such as Mario and Mega Man. PS1 and SNES were basically my introductions into the entirety that is gaming. I would even go as far as to say that I was spoiled on that front with some of the best consoles of their respective generation. I still to this day have them out on my living room entertainment center. So I know a thing or two about precision platforming action. So I'll just come right out and say it. I love and hate this new Crash remake. Now, hear me out. The Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy is a remake in the less traditional sense of the word, at least as far as this industry is concerned nowadays. It was remade from the ground up, meaning no pre-existing assets, no pre-existing code, just visuals to go off of to match. These days, most companies pop out remakes like they're going out of style, slapping a fresh coat of paint, or in this case, higher definition textures. Remakes these days don't even opt to change bug gameplay mechanics or even fix a few nuisances that were either complained about or broke the game in its entirety. A few HD remakes have actually broke the base game in some form or another, whether it be major or minor. A good example of this was the Kingdom Hearts PS4 HD remake. I love the Kingdom Hearts series more than I can put into words. Don't get me wrong, but when it was released, it had things such as save crashing and the increase to 60 frames per second, which as a core selling point, actually broke core game mechanics. It was of course patched out weeks later, but I digress. Now let's get one thing straight. I love Crash Bandicoot. It was one of the quintessential games of my childhood. And on the surface, this remake is phenomenal. I'm assuming if you click this video, chances are you know a thing or two about Crash Bandicoot. However, if you've never played a Crash game before, then hot damn, you're in for a world of frenetic, action-packed, collect-a-thon fun. Crash Bandicoot follows the simple old-timey plot of bad guy does a thing, you collect some things, you correct the thing, and die. <laughs> you die a lot. Sure, you'll get frustrated at times, blaming the game for silly avoidable deaths. You know how platforming is, whether they be funny or horror inducing. But its difficulty and accessibility will bring you countless hours of platforming fun. And don't even get me started on the music. It has amazing music. Some of the catchiest, most well-suited music for its respective stages. No song here feels out of place. In terms of music, I'd go as far as to say it's up there with Mario and the long lost neglected robot. Artistically, it's one of the shining examples of how to approach a beloved classic. The artistic integrity is well intact, so to speak. Every locale has been painstakingly remade with such a fine attention to detail, not overdoing it and not underperforming. In Crash 1, the river levels are gorgeous. Not only is the foliage more detailed and vibrant, and it's not over the top. It took the original concept and made it more believable and alive. They even made a little platform for the stopwatch, which of course kept to the theme of the tropical islands, instead of just slapping it on the log lazy-like. It even coincides with the occasional totems scattered throughout the level. Consistency. It's a beautiful thing. Having Tana being swooped away in the bonus levels, instead of just standing there. It's a welcome change and again, makes sense, and adds consistency to the story. The attention to details are nice. Levels like the high road and slippery climb, while frustrating as hell, Game over. Yep, sounds about right. Are amazing to look at. Graphically, there's nothing really to complain about. Uh, maybe in Crash Bandicoot 3, the water jet levels look a little bland under the water. Maybe some coral reefs or ocean depth would have been amazing here. Honestly, I think I just have this deep-rooted hatred for the jet ski levels. Even more so than I did in the original trilogy on PS1, thanks to the remade controls. And oh boy, what a great segue into one of my biggest complaints of this remake. The remade controls. 
Now don't get me wrong, the controls for being remade from the ground up at first glance handle almost identically to the original Crash games, for the most part. You see, chances are you've already heard of the controversy surrounding the hitboxes of this remake. If you played the originals or grew up with them, you'll likely notice that the jumping and hitboxes in the remake feel off. More often than not, the curiosity surrounding the situation was spurred on by how easily players familiar with Crash games were dying more than usual. People noticed something was off, and when they voiced their concern, most people tossed the phrase, get good. And sure, I can see that at first glance. It does appear to be a skill check of sorts. Surely, these players are just not as good as they once were, right? Well, what if I told you it wasn't the fault of the players, and more of the fault of the developer? Look at this example. Does this look okay to you? Here, let's play that again. Or how about this? Or even this? Great evil has come. For those uninformed, the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy was made with Unity, which shouldn't be a problem in any way. I only state this fact because through intense analysis by the community, such as the Reddit user Tasty Carcass, I only use him or her as my example as most review outlets like to use his image in their thread or review. This in turn helped the community come to the conclusion that it wasn't us the gamer, it was the game itself. This image here is something you might have seen if you yourself looked up the hitbox or the difficulty issue due to dying or what have you. What this image represents is the hitbox shape assigned to Crash and Coco respectively. It explains why you can partially fall off a ledge and still jump or slide off a ledge you otherwise thought you could make. Well why is all this important? Crash Bandicoot is a precision platformer, especially the first two games. It was designed with a more calculated, thought-driven aspect to its level design. I want to highlight the term precision here, as not only is Crash's jump arc different, having him fall faster than before, now we have to deal with a pill-shaped hitbox fighting against us. And you might be thinking, well, that sounds more thought-driven, as now you really have to be precise about your jumps. And you'd be right to an extent, but let me ask you a question. What did the remake set out to do in the first place? It was to faithfully recreate the same experience from an age-long past. And I understand that the game had to be completely remade from the ground up, and I'm in no way being a purist. You know, I get that little changes are fine, whether intentional or not, but in a game that is as hard as Crash Bandicoot, small things like this make or break it for some individuals. With that said, I'm an open-minded individual. I love change, I can work with it, and I love a good challenge. I've platinumed them the game, and I had a blast doing so, as there's fun and difficulty, and I did indeed get good. I made the best of the new controls, so no problemo. The comparison I keep seeing about Crash being the next Dark Souls in terms of difficulty is a bit silly though, as it stems from the fact that the jump arc and hitboxes are creating artificial difficulty. You see, in the original Crash games, Crash's hitbox was a square, or at least more uniform, from what I could gather. Now, as I said before, the game is a precision platformer that lets you make calculated decisions based on what's in front of you through proper level design in normal play. Notice, however, that I said normal play because at the end of the day, playing this game is fun, and anyone can get accustomed to the controls. However, one feature that was added to Crash 1 and 2 from Crash 3 makes the hitbox issue more apparent than usual. One word, relics. So, did you notice most of the deaths I showed beforehand were me attempting the relics? as demonstrated by the little timer in the corner? If you're anything like me and want to get the most bang for your buck out of a game you really enjoy, you platinum it, or 100% it, right? In the original games, Crash 1 and 2 only had gems to obtain. <laughs> You get gems for basically 100%ing a level by breaking all available boxes in a given stage. Sounds easy, right? Speaking of, while we're on the subject, one of the best changes they made to the trilogy was checkpoint boxes saving your box count. In the original games, if you died at all in a stage, that was it. You had to reset as boxes didn't save. It was either you did it perfectly on the first try, or you get nothing at all. This is such a welcome change to the series as it offsets the jumping mechanic changes and hitbox changes by lowering the perfection required by the past games. It's when you get to relics that this issue truly rears its ugly face. Now, I'll just come out and say it. To be quite honest, relics in Crash 1 and 2 felt like a complete afterthought. Like something they just slapped on at the very end. And don't get me wrong, I love the idea of relics in the first and second game, you know? Anything to get more longevity out of one of my favorite games of all time. I was super excited to get them all and set out to do so after I beat every level on Crash 1. It wasn't until the third level that I started to realize the true horror of the new hitboxes and jump arc. Getting through levels at a slow and calculated speed, as I said before, gem or not, isn't bad. But once you factor in speed, it gets a whole lot worse. You see, the original Crash games, aside from the third one, were not designed for speedrunning. You could do it through practice and determination, but that was on you. 
the player. You could argue the same for relics. You don't have to get them, but then you don't have to 100% a game that you cherish and love. Now on paper, relics for Crash 1 and 2 don't sound bad. They actually sound like a lot of fun, and they are in the third game, where the game was designed around it. In Crash Warped, you received abilities for beating bosses, and the game doesn't give you the core ability of speedrunning, the sprint ability, until the game has been completed. Through clever game design, it's letting you know, hey, you beat the game. You want a little more? Here, go nuts. Run fast through the levels. Let's see what you can really do, champ. Crash 3, the only game that originally had relics, also gave you double jump, a hover move, and much more to help you master and destroy level obstacles, thus hinting through context that they could possibly be done faster and egging you on for future abilities. Now let's look at the first and second Crash games. In Crash Bandicoot 1, you get no abilities whatsoever. So that means it's just down to precision platforming skills, right? Well, with the changed hitboxes and jump arc, I argue that that precision is lost. You're forced to race through a level without stopping, and you must achieve a gold relic or higher as you need gold to get the achievement. In Crash Bandicoot, there exists sapphire, gold, and platinum relics, with sapphire being the lowest rank, gold in between, and platinum for the best times. Now, the reason I said it feels like an afterthought is simply because most levels require no stopping to simply get a gold relic. And some levels are very lenient on time, while others require almost perfection to simply get gold. As I said before, I love a good challenge. I did them all. But my god, will these try your mental sanity, especially levels like the high road. You will die. You will die a lot trying to get some of these. I still vividly remember trying to get the gold relic for the high road. In fact, if you have a copy of the game yourself, I highly recommend trying it for yourself to see what I mean. I almost lost my sanity going for the gold. The level itself is hard enough, but factor in the speedrun mechanic mechanic and now you have a level straight from the bowels of whatever hell you believe in. I'm going to close up the whole rant on relics with my favorite game in the trilogy, Crash Bandicoot 2. Right from the get-go, relics are unlocked on Crash 2 in the remake. The game leads you on, making you think that you can indeed achieve gold relics. No problem. Go ahead, try. Oh, what's that? You can't even come close to achieving the gold rank time for the very first level? Truly, you must be a scrub among scrubs. Now look, I get that the original Crash 3 also let you attempt relics from the get-go, and is equally guilty of this trope. Now at its core, this is terrible game design. To let a player think that they can achieve the goal time, let them attempt it, and give the player no indication that there's an unlockable that can help. Oh, sorry the game didn't tell you a single thing about it or even hint that you might possibly need to stop these silly futile attempts until you get an unlockable in a game that didn't have unlockables to begin with. The only reason I'm not trashing on Crash Bandicoot 3 for this very same flaw is again, early on you get abilities from beating bosses. So you can argue through context clues that you might get some sort of means of beating a level faster. For the Crash 2 remake, the only reason I found out was because I caved in from the countless attempts trying to skip the pits on the first level over and over and over again, convinced that I could do it, only to look it up online and notice, hey wait, this player seems to be moving at a much faster speed. Wait, Sprint is in Crash 2? What? And I'll just leave it at that. But I digress. Is the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy a good game? Hell yeah. Does it have flaws? Of course. Every game does. And as I asked before, is this truly the definitive version of the first three Crash Bandicoot games? At the end of the day, I'd argue yes. While it does have its flaws, newcomers or just the casual gamer will completely love this game. It's simple, silly, and I guarantee you'll have one of the most fun gaming experiences of your life guaranteed. Especially if you've never played Crash Bandicoot before. And isn't that truly what games are meant to be about? Fun? Hey, hope you enjoyed my first foray into YouTube. I plan to do these once a month or maybe twice, depending on how busy I am. If you agreed or disagreed with anything I said, let me know in the comments below. Interact with me. You know, I'd love to hear counter arguments or just things that I missed that maybe should have been pointed out. And again, thanks so much for watching everyone. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!